the digital nomad lifestyle has become very, very popular in the last few years, especially post COVID. And I completely understand the hype. Who doesn't want to travel and see the world all while being able to work location independent? And if you're watching this video, you might have been looking up how to become a digital nomad or tips and tricks on being a successful digital nomad. And as someone that became a digital nomad at 19, I feel like I have some things to talk about. And I am in the beautiful, very beautiful Italian Alps right now. So I thought, what better way to tell you guys about this lifestyle than take you guys on a walk and tell you my story. Now, before getting started with this video, I have to make a couple of disclaimers. I hate clickbait culture, telling lies or exaggerations just to get more views. So this is not going to be a video all about how to become the most successful digital nomad and how you can get so rich and travel first class everywhere and live in villas and stuff like that. That is not going to be this type of story because I want to tell you guys the truth. And that is that I didn't intend to become a digital nomad. I stumbled into this lifestyle when I was 19 years old from a very different background. I was never rich. I am a first generation immigrant raised by a single mother. So I never knew that lifestyles like this could exist until I accidentally stumbled into it. And more specifically, I am not some kind of genius. I don't come from a tech background. I am not a software engineer and I do not make a ton of money. I don't have my life figured out. And being a digital nomad isn't about seeing the world from helicopters and private jets and living in poolside villas. So if you want a relatable story about how Digital nomadism isn't this beautiful, lavish lifestyle that you see on social media and how a person that honestly is nothing special is able to become one at 19, then this might be the story for you. Now I'm going to try to keep this as brief as I possibly can, but to make you guys understand how this lifestyle came about for me, I am going to have to go back in time a little bit. So this might be a little bit of a story. So maybe put me on in the background, have a snack, have a drink. I have my favorite non-alcoholic beer here and let's go explore the Alps while I tell you all about it. Yeah. So digital nomads are known to be people that love to travel all the time, are changing locations, and I think you have to have a certain type of personality to enjoy that type of stuff. So I'd like to say that I have had the nomadic personality pretty much since I was born. Because I was born to a mom who grew up on Soviet army bases and moved around about 17 times before she finished high school. And it seemed like I inherited that trait because by the time I was 8 years old, I lived in 3 different countries and that was before I even came to Canada. Now even though I'm a first generation immigrant, I of course have to acknowledge the immense privilege that I have that I left Russia as a young girl and moved to Canada and before anyone wonders да я до сих пор говорю по-русски у нас было правило в доме где я не могла говорить по-английски и только из-за этого я до сих пор могу говорить по-русски but this journey would probably not have existed if I didn't become a Canadian at a pretty young age and I'm eternally grateful to my mother who as a single parent still managed to give her kids a better life and immigrated by herself to a whole new country on the other side of the world so really this entire journey wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for her but like the majority of first-generation immigrants, I never intended to pack a bag and just travel the world full-time. And most of my childhood, I had the dreams of becoming a doctor and got into university for a pre-med degree in Canada. But what sparked the beginning of my idea of being nomadic is I actually finished high school completely online because I was chronically ill from an accident that occurred when I was 13. But I didn't know how much it would change my life until much later. Now you might be wondering, how does somebody that was in a pre-med degree become a nomad and travel the world? That doesn't really coincide with being a doctor, does it? And like I said, I finished high school completely online. I actually taught myself all four years. And I very much got used to the idea that I was the person controlling my education. I had my own schedule. I didn't have to go to classes. I did my work on my own time and working around my chronic illnesses. And after finishing high school, of course, I had to go into a regular schmegular university. And I managed one whole year of in-person university before I realized I was so completely miserable. <laughs> and this is where the beginning of my digital nomad journey began, because the summer after finishing my first year of university, by some stroke of fate or something, got an advertisement for a pre-med degree that was completely online from a Canadian university. And I thought to myself, this might be the sign I was looking for. And I applied and told myself that if I would get in, I would pack a backpack and just go travel the world while completing my pre-med degree. Because after I finish that and have to go to medical school, I'm gonna be stuck in one place for a while. And I thought this might be the 
only possible way that I could have the best of both worlds and travel while I'm young, but still go and finish what I thought was my dream of becoming a doctor. I don't think I have to say spoiler alert to let you guys know that of course I got into that online university and that was my sign to pack a backpack at 19 years old and just travel the world. So I bought a one-way ticket to Paris, cliche, I know, and decided to see the world while I could. Of course, you might be thinking, how the hell are you supporting yourself at 19 years old while you're studying full time? And this was the first event that allowed me to dip my toes into the lifestyle of digital nomading. So this was about five years ago and online jobs were not as popular as they were now post COVID. And I didn't have the resume that would allow me to have any type of high paying tech jobs because in reality, while I started working really young, immigrant problems, I did, so many different things like working for cruise lines and working in the film industry in Vancouver as a background actor, being a barista and a lot of customer support-esque of roles. I didn't think I would find a job that would take in my skills and allow me to work remotely, but I was proven to be wrong. I don't know if you guys can hear or see the cows that are right over here, but if that's not quintessential Italian countryside, I don't know what is. But back to the story. If you thought that digital nomads were only people that were like social media managers or on the other spectrum super techy people like software engineers or developers that kind of stuff i'm here to show you that that is actually wrong and even five years ago when remote jobs were not at the peak that they are now post covid there were still jobs for us non-techy people that you can do online and i am not saying that it is easy it never was and i don't think it ever really will be and so my first job that allowed me to dip my toe into digital nomadism was actually a contract customer support job that i was able to do completely online for a company that was based out of god knows where and i am not saying it paid a lot but it paid enough for a 19 year old me to be able to see the world as a full-time traveler and in my first year i visited something like 15 countries i traveled primarily on night buses sleeping on like families couches house sitting which i know if you guys have ever watched any of my videos you know i'm all about house sitting living in hostels sometimes eating only twice a day things like that i am not saying that digital nomad life was luxurious my friends and to be completely honest five years down the line it still isn't always luxurious but that is life I mentioned contract position very specifically because one of the things that a lot of digital nomads on social media don't tell you is how difficult it is to have a full-time job that is based out of a certain place that will actually allow you to be fully location independent. And it is mostly due to legal issues for the company that you are working for as they can't actually allow you to be paid in different countries because it is a whole mess taxation wise and that is quite typical for north american companies so i will not be the person to say that having a digital nomad job is easy and if you go down the freelance route it is honestly just as hard if not harder to get a job and to stick with it because it all depends on you Nevertheless, I managed to travel almost two years full time and I was able to do so through various customer service positions that allowed me to be online. A lot of them were contract based or and or seasonal jobs. So that is something that I always recommend to look out for because it does make getting a job easier as they don't actually care where you're based out of most of the time again. Now, let me bust a very popular myth that runs around in the digital nomad community. And that is that digital nomads work by the beach or by the pool for like two hours a day. And then they do whatever they want and live their best life the rest of the time. That is not true. Now this was made a lot harder for me because I was also a full-time student. So very often I would actually be spending eight to 10 hours by the computer studying and working and then going out to explore whatever place I was in for maybe a couple hours if I even had the strength. Now, I think I'm about to be joined by some very special guests. And Yikusha. But if you're thinking about going into the digital nomad life because you want to travel the world while working for a couple of hours, newsflash, the majority of us do not have that type of luxury. And no matter how many people show that on social media, do not believe it. Now, believe it or not, sometimes the digital nomad life can also look like this. Now, before I got completely distracted by our special guests over here. I wanted to bring the point home that digital nomads, a lot of the times, and this is from having many digital nomad friends throughout my years, she agrees, uh, without, 
And this is from having many digital nomad friends throughout the years that have cemented the idea that as much as social media likes to show you, being a digital nomad is actually not very luxurious whatsoever. Especially if you are the type that travels and changes locations very often, which is actually what I was doing for the first two years because I was in that so-called honeymoon stage of the lifestyle where I was just so excited to be able to have this opportunity and I wanted to see everything all at once, which I will tell you right now, I will tell you right now that was very much not sustainable and led to burnout which is actually another myth that i want to dispel about the digital nomad lifestyle where people think that because we are living such amazing lives and i will say i'm extremely privileged to have this lifestyle i am never taking that for granted but that does not mean that your problems do not catch up to you and that is extremely important is mental health as a digital nomad is actually quite a difficult topic to talk about from my experience again through digital nomad friends that i have it is actually something that a lot of digital nomads struggle with after a while you actually get the sense that you start to lose an identity of yourself because you are not tied to one place. We humans are kind of hardwired, I think, to have uh, a place that we like to call our own. And if you do not have that, it leads to some very interesting... Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Sorry, pony break. No. You want to say something? No? No, don't eat the microphone. This is my best friend, Nikita. Or Nikusha, like I like to call her. Yes, hi. And actually, she is one of the reasons that I come here for this house sit because, like I just said, as a digital nomad, we have quite a lot of mental health issues sometimes. And horse therapy, or pony therapy in this case, is very much helpful. And I try to see her, hey, don't bite my butt. I try to see her at least once a year for my own mental health. So I think you guys are probably catching on to the fact that I am trying to show you that being a digital nomad is not all that it seems. And I do blame social media for showing all of the good sides, and I'm not saying I am perfect, I definitely have gone through that as well, without showing all the bad sides that go hand in hand with this lifestyle. With the rise of digital nomadism on social media and things like that, I have met some very interesting people that have been able to transition their previous jobs into something remote that would allow them to be digital nomads. And I'm talking people like therapists, I'm talking people like lawyers, personal trainers, Things that you don't actually associate with a digital nomad job. But once again, showing you that a lot of people have gotten very creative and made their own version of the digital nomad lifestyle in the way that works best for them. But a consensus that I've noticed for a lot of them is that it is still very, very difficult. And for quite a lot of people, it is simply not worth it. And I've known people that have quit being digital nomads after about a year and gone back to a life that felt more comfortable for them. Now, I don't want you guys to think that this is me trying to talk anybody out of being a digital nomad because I absolutely love this lifestyle. It's still one that I think is great for those that want to go down this path. But I am making this more of like a source of information for things that you won't have figured out until you've done it for quite a while. And I wish I would have seen stuff like this when I was starting out as a digital nomad. But of course, that was not as popular back then. And a lot of people don't realize the sacrifices that you actually make when you really get into the digital nomad life. And that often consists of losing relationships, uh, losing touch with friends and family, because while this lifestyle is getting more popular, it's still not a very well understood by others who are not interested in this type of life. And I have absolutely lost connections with friends, with family members, certain ones, because they simply don't see why you're doing this, which is completely fine. Everyone has a right to their opinion. But a lot of digital nomads that are starting out don't realize that that might happen to them. And then that really discourages them in the beginning. Figure out if your personality is actually going to work out with this lifestyle, because like I said before, I have a very nomadic personality and I thrive with changing locations all the time. And I permanently left Canada almost two years ago. I've already done almost three major country changes because obviously now my nomadic lifestyle is semi-nomadic where I have home bases and I will be making another move to a different country very soon, probably by the end of the year, and I will be making videos about that. Moral of the story, do I think that digital nomading is this amazing lifestyle that everyone should try out? Honestly, yes and no. I actually don't think that it is sustainable for the majority of people because a lot of the information from digital nomads on social media 
only shows the greatness of non-stop travel and not the amount of things that you have to give up in your life psychologically and in reality to continue living this lifestyle. This isn't even mentioning the almost constant stress that practically every single digital nomad lives with in the sense that if we lose our income, our lifestyle becomes very, very difficult to maintain. And this is where I'm being very truthful and honest with you guys that I don't have my life together and I do not have enough savings to continue supporting myself if I were to lose my source of income currently. Believe it or not, quite a lot of digital nomads who of course don't say this, live the same way and many of them live on credit cards now i hope this video helped you guys dispel some of the false narratives that are on social media about digital nomading and it truly isn't this insanely luxurious unproblematic lifestyle and i do think that it is time that a lot more of us become honest on social media i think the years of clickbait and exaggerations are just extremely harmful for a huge amount of things but digital nomading specifically for this video at least but with all that said i am still internally grateful for this lifestyle and i'm still gonna consider myself a digital nomad for quite a while because i am realizing i didn't finish my story after spending two years of being a digital nomad while studying full-time i realized that i would have been completely miserable continuing on to medical school and i did obviously not continue on and my degree ended up being useless and i am so grateful that i realized this early on and I encountered the digital nomad lifestyle when I was 19 because if it wasn't for that I would have continued on with what I thought would make me happy and it probably would have been way too late when I finally would have realized that I wasn't actually happy and if you are just finishing high school or you're in your early 20s and you are unsure of what you want to do in life, I want you guys to know that that is so completely fine and actually quite normal. I think the fact that society is trying to tell us from a very young age to build a career and to know exactly what we want to do when we're not actually even adults, even through neurodevelopment, is absolutely ridiculous. And if you have the ability and the privilege to travel and explore more of the world and yourself when you're young, please, please, please do so because it truly has changed who I am as a person. And for that, I will eternally be grateful to the digital nomad lifestyle. And the last thing I want you guys to remember is, especially us women, we have society induced imposter syndrome for almost everything and it is seen in how we apply for jobs if we're not fully qualified we almost never actually apply even though it's been shown that men actually do even if they don't have all of the requirements of the job it is time that we stand up for ourselves and it is time that we strive for what we actually want in life and if you are still interested in the digital nomad lifestyle i will be leaving websites in the description box of all the digital nomad job databases that i have used over the years that i have recommended so you guys can actually see how many jobs there are that allow you to be fully remote and maybe give you guys ideas of what you can transition into because it is not just one path and then you are a digital nomad. Truly, I haven't met two digital nomads that do the exact same thing and became nomads in the exact same way. So it is a very personalized lifestyle, as you guys can probably tell from my story and i hope this showed you guys that you don't have to be from an affluent background and you don't have to be some tech wizard or some genius that has their own business to become a digital nomad so i understand this was probably a very chatty video but please leave me a comment down below if you found this video interesting and if you guys have any questions about the digital nomad lifestyle i can obviously go into detail about certain parts of the lifestyle if that is what interests you so i'm gonna end this video here say goodbye to my special guests and i will see you guys in the next one.